Hello everyone, welcome back to the Asakura Makargo channel. So in previous videos I explained how the ignition coil works and how to test it. Today's video is going to be about how the ignition coil receives the signal from a distributor that has ignition points and condenser. The reason why we're going all the way back to this technology is so you can understand how it all got started. That way later on when I explain how the electronic ignition or the modern systems that use cam sensor, crank sensors and so forth operate, you'll be able to understand the whole thing a lot better because you know how everything got started. So let's get this camera up close so you can see it better. So now that we have the camera up close, before we go over the operation, let's review the parts involved. If you watched previous videos, you know how the ignition coil works. So here it is. This is a picture of a distributor from a top view with the distributor cap removed, which it would be that one. So inside the distributor that has the points and condenser, you're gonna see the point set, you're gonna see the condenser, this is the shaft where the ignition rotor goes mounted on. This is the cam right here of the distributor that opens and closes the points. We'll go over that in a second. This is the distributor cap that goes over it. This is the ignition rotor. This slides over the shaft. This is a spark plug wire. It goes obviously to each spark plug. This is the ignition coil wire, which will be this one right here. And this is a closer view of the point set. So now that you know the parts involved, let's go over the operation. The ignition point set acts as a switch, and how it acts as a switch is by interrupting the current flow through the ignition coil primary windings. When the current flow is interrupted, as we explained in previous videos, collapses the magnetic field, and that's when the high current flows through the secondary tower to the distributor cap. Now the point set is connected directly to ground because it's bolted to the distributor. On the pictures that I drew right here, the points are closed because if you look at the cam, right now it's on its resting position. Now the picture that I drew here, as a closer view, I left a slight gap just so you can see that there are contact points. But in reality, they are close right now. So this would be touching each other. Now when the distributor rotates, because of the shape of the cam, and depending on the number of cylinders the engine has, that's how many cam lobes are going to exist. So this is a V8. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as it rotates, the cam is going to open the points. And when the points are opened, is when the current flow is interrupted to the primary windings of the coil. And obviously that creates the current. Now something very important to know is why there's a need to have a condenser. The reason why this setup needs a condenser is because when the points are open, the electrical charge on the primary circuit it would want to jump in between the two contacts and one of the best ways to avoid the current from jumping from contact to contact when they're open is to have a device like a condenser that is going to absorb that excess energy when these contact points are open if this setup didn't have a condenser or when the condenser goes bad the contact points they burn very quickly and that's why these two components are replaced in pairs always have a new condenser when you install a new point set. Just a very quick clarification, the pictures that I drew here, when the current is being sent through the rotor to each spark plug, that would be when this part of the point set is riding on a cam load. So if these two pictures were to match, the rotor right here would be somewhere in the middle, just so you know. I want to make that clear because I don't want you to be confused and if you've never seen a points and condenser distributor, I don't want you to think that when this part is sitting on the flat part of the cam is when these two would be aligned. That's not the case. There are two different pictures during two different times of distributor rotation. I just want to clarify that. When dealing with points and condenser distributors, it's very important to know what dwell means and how to set it. So dwell is the period of time that the ignition points stay closed during distributor rotation. And this is adjusted by setting the point gap. What I did here, I brought my very antique dwell and tack meter this shows you how long I've been doing this automotive it's like forever and it's dusty so it hasn't been used for a long time when you're setting the dwell you connect the green to your tack and this to ground and you check the degrees right here and to set the points you use the filler gauge depending on the engine so let's say for instance we were adjusting a V8 around 17 thousandths of an inch. This would be the gap on the point set. 
So now that you know what load means, let's see how this takes place and how to set it. For example, on a four cylinder engine, the distributor is going to have four cam loads, which it would be these right here. It would be four. And if there's only four cam loads, they're going to be 90 degrees apart. Because if you multiply 90 times 4, that's 360, which is 360 degrees of rotation. So that's why a four cylinder would have cam loads 90 degrees apart. However, the dwell cannot be set at 90 degrees because there's got to be a time for the signal to be interrupted that goes to the coil. So the dwell on a four cylinder engine, it will be anywhere from 40 to 45 degrees of distributor rotation. On a six cylinder engine, the cam lobes, they're 60 degrees apart, 60 times 6, 360, but the dwell is set between 30 to 35 degrees of distributor rotation. On an A cylinder, the dwell is set between 28 and 32 degrees of distributor rotation. And we already said that the way to set the dwell is to adjust the gap. So the gap on the points, the gap that would exist right here on a four cylinder is going to be between 20 and 25 thousandths of an inch. And we already said that you use your filler gauge. How this works, you loosen both of the screws and you move the point set. Now you got to make sure that this part of the points is touching the cam lobe. So the cam lobe would have to be right here when you're adjusting the gap. Then you insert your filler gauge right there and on a four cylinder you would have to be in between these measurements and that's going to vary depending on the engine manufacturer that's why I put the averages 20 to 25 so let's just say you're working on an engine that requires 22 so you grab your filler gauge set look for a 22 thousandths of an inch and then you slide the point set until that filler gauge slides here tightly then you tighten both of the screws then you slide the filler gauge in between them again just to make sure that they didn't move when you tighten the screws and that's how you set the gap on your point set. Last reminder, cam lobe needs to be touching this part of the point set right there. If it's closed like that, that's not going to work. So on a six cylinder, the average is going to be about 20 thousandths of an inch. And now you can see how a narrower gap is going to provide more dwell and a wider gap is going to produce less dwell. Now excessive dwell makes the points close too soon after opening. This can cut off the magnetic field collapse before it delivers the energy. Too little dwell gives insufficient time to build a magnetic field and both are going to produce weak spark. Some early distributors would have a window on the cap. It would be like right here if you were looking it up from the side. And with an Allen wrench you can set the dwell when the vehicle is running. So that was kind of neat because that would enable you to look at your dwell reading and adjust it as the vehicle is running like I said usually with an Allen wrench so those were kind of cool made things a lot faster for you all you have to do is set the initial gap with your filler gauge and then tune your dwell as the vehicle was running very very cool I remember doing that made things a lot faster and easier and there you have it. Now you have a better understanding of how the ignition coil receives the signal from a distributor that has points of condenser. You also know what dwell means, you know how to set the point gap. And now that you have this basic knowledge, you're going to be better able to understand how the electronic ignition system works. So look for that on future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.